Welcome everyone, Marcelo Oliatayerre is my name. I am The Collector. This is something in my collection, so therefore this is called The Collector's Collection. <laughs> If you haven't subscribed, I would love you to do so. The Niche Fragrance Collect is all about amazing fragrances from all around the world. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a UK or English based brand called True Fit and Hill. Now the history on True Fit and Hill goes back to 1805. Now let me put that in perspective. Charles Dickens, we all know Charles Dickens, right? He actually would go to the True Fit barbershop and actually have a haircut. He actually wrote how amazing the, the, the experience actually was and how much he enjoyed it. So that gives you an idea how long this brand has been around. So William Truffitt first established the brand 1805. It became uh, infamous or famous, infamous or famous, I don't know, anyway, um, to the point where King George III became aware and as a result gave them a royal warrant from then on, he was, you know, it was, he was just made in a rain. Um, the brand has been around, as I said, for that long and has always kept everything very much intact as to how they would do it. Everything is still made in the UK. They do keep to the recipes that were first established by William Truffitt. And you'll find that a lot of the colognes that they have were actually created back in 18 something or other. 1805 was the first one. Actually, it's called 1805. That's the very first fragrance they came out with. Now, when you smell those and you experience those, you'll find that they have, in my opinion, a very similar DNA, meaning that they are clean barbershop fragrances. Beautiful citrus opening. They go nice and aromatic easy to wear. When I was first testing, this one here stood out as the black sheep. This one here threw me. All the others all played in a very similar space, whereas this one here actually created its own entity. I found out this is their latest release. 2016, this fragrance came out. It's completely different to the others. I would say the others you could easily blind buy. This one here, I'd recommend that you actually try first. It's a whole new experience. Let me tell you about it. So the opening is classic, meaning grapefruit, lemon, and pepper. However, the grapefruit, when I say grapefruit, I always think of Elysium, very bright, very sort of sparkling opening. This one is a little bit on the bitter side. It has a sharp, not a sharpness to it, but it has a, it, it's, a, it's a more serious tone. In the heart, and let me, let me break down the other notes so then I can say where I think or how these notes are playing together. So in the heart, it goes into lavender, jasmine, um, and also vetiver. Jasmine, I'm not getting any, all right? So I, I, they're the official notes, but for me, the jasmine, I'm not, I'm not getting any sort of soft flowers in there or any white flowers in there. Finally, in, in the base, it does go to patchouli musk and cedarwood, I guess, classic anchoring notes. Now, I put this in a citrus aromatic category. However, it does go into wood. It does go, um, it is a very masculine fragrance. I don't know if a female, well actually these are all designed for men, um, but this one here is definitely a, a male fragrance. The lavender definitely plays in there. When it dries down for me, it stays in that citrus, peppery, woody kind of place. It's very earthy. I think the vetiver, I, I would put, all, I would even define this as a spicy vetiver fragrance. So if you like vetiver, you will enjoy this particular fragrance here. It is an eau de cologne, meaning that it doesn't have the same sort of punch and longevity as an eau de parfum. If you want to know the difference between all that, have a look at the link above. However, I find that on my skin, I actually enjoy eau de colognes. Um, so when, and I, and I actually purposely um, use eau de colognes for specific occasions. So if I want to go, if I'm going somewhere where I want to be a little bit more subdued, I don't want to have, you know, a party, you want to have a bit more punch because there's a lot of people there, a lot of bodies mingling. But if you're going to a meeting or even the office or something where you don't really want to, you know, state your claim, so definitely eau de colognes are beautiful and classic fragrances for those occasions. This one here is exactly that. So on me, I find that, and I put, I put a little bit more. So normally Urta performs, I do about three sprays. With the Urta colognes, I'm putting about five to six. Okay, so I am spraying a little bit more. But in the end, I find that this one here, it lasts at least six to seven hours comfortably. In the evening, I can still smell it on me. But the sillage on this is what well, it's a body scent. So it doesn't have the sort of big sort of punchy projection. Um, for me, this does sit as a body scent. 
Um, being Latino, whenever we say hello to people, we hug and kiss and all that sort of stuff. So I, I, I also enjoy the fact that no one knows what I'm wearing when I'm wearing a Nerd Cologne until they come into my radius. We do the traditional hug and kiss. And at that moment there, a lot of people always say, wow, I love what you're wearing today. I love your, the fragrance that you're wearing. So it is, it, it is a great body scent. Now, do I love it? Again, it's in my collection. So the short answer is yes. 100%, I do enjoy this fragrance. Now, where does it sit when it comes to, and this is something new that we're gonna start incorporating. I'll, I'll do a separate video for this, but I wanna show where it sits on the wheel. It does, when it dries down, it does fall into the wood category. Recently, I did a video where people were saying that they want more definition from me, meaning uh, I rate everything at 100%, but so I should because it's in my collection, I own it. Um, but what I'm gonna start doing, and I'll do a video specifically for that to define how I can break this down a little bit more so that you can see clearly, I guess, my level of love. So uh, I'm obviously gonna, I'm gonna exceed 100, 110% of love, go figure. Does my wife love it? Um, she's more in the 60%. So I mentioned earlier that I do have uh, two uh, True Fit and Hills at this moment in time, it always, Things change, but anyway, at this moment in time, two true fit and hills. One is sandalwood, the other one is absolutely. If she had a choice, she would choose sandalwood. It's a classic, beautiful, uh, fresh fragrance. Where this one here, as I said, on the dry down, it does go a bit spicy. It's a bit heavier um, uh, when it comes to the fragrance itself. Truffin and Hill are across the world. We are so fortunate, oh, I feel fortunate, that we have one here in Melbourne, a beautiful boutique. Um, have a look at the link here. I did a James Bond-esque style of video promoting their, uh, their boutique. Um, so, and actually, I, they were generous and they offered me a, a, a wet shave, which I also did a video. Have a look at that there. That's it. Absolutely awesome fragrance from True Fit and Hill. I would say you could easily blind buy the, or Apsley's brothers. Uh, they're all classic barbershop. This one here, do not blind buy, test first. It is a little bit different compared to the others there. Hope you enjoyed that. If you would like to know anything more or any other uh, fragrance, let me know. Put it in the comments. Uh, tell me of fragrances that you're discovering that I should know more about. Thanks everyone. We'll see you on the next video.